Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Lazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Amy and welcome to the Egg Whisper Show. The topic today is the effect of the environment on your fertility with special guest, Dr. Jenna Hua. Egg quality, sperm quality, embryo quality, all depend on your age, genetics, and environment. But we don't have diagnostic tests to tell people how their environment is affecting their fertility health. Until now, for the last almost 10 years, I've been looking for a test that I can offer my patients that tells them if they've been exposed to things like plastics, BPA, phthalates. The day has come. We have a test. So thank you, Jenna, for coming on today's show. Please introduce yourself and say hi to our audience. Hello, everyone. Hi, Amy. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to be on the show. Um, as Amy said, I also being looking for a partner to actually offer the service to others and to help them with their fertility journey as well as optimizing their health. Um, tell us about yourself. You're a research scientist. Tell us where you went to school, what your research focus has been. Yes. So I guess I will share some of the slides. Um, my name is Jenna. I'm the founder and CEO of, of Million Marker. My background training um, is in nutrition and environmental health. Um, it was through my research that I realized how important environment is to our health. And it was also amplified by my personal journey of fertility struggles that made me realize we really need a tool to allow us to actually capture our environmental exposures and then do something about it. Perfect. And tell us about your company. When was it started? Where is it located? Yes. So uh, we're a million marker. Uh, we're based in Berkeley. We started not so long ago about um, it's been about eight months. Um, so far, we have been around and we're trying to measure people's environment, um, how their environment impact their health. So you have an amazing quote that I saw on your website. What was that quote? Uh, yes. So this is a quote that we figured it's very easy for people to understand and then really get to the core of why environment is important. Pretty much your, your health is driven by your genes and your environment. And in fact, your genes only accounts for about 30% of your disease risk, whereas the rest of it is your environment, 70%. This is a concept we call it exposome versus your genome. So genome captures your gene, exposome captures your cumulative environmental uh, exposures. And a famous quote um, is, uh, the, the famous quote is, genetics loads a gun, but the environment actually pulls the trigger. So this is shows how important environment is and uh, how environment could interact with your genes and then really pulls the trigger. Great, so your test could help patients who, for example, might be having problems with egg quality or even just infertility, not necessarily egg quality. That's great. And then how many man-made chemicals are really out there and how many are actually tested? Good question. Actually, there are over 80,000 man-made chemicals out there today and then we actually only have 1% tested for safety. We wow. basically don't have sufficient information for more than 70,000 chemicals that's in use today. Can you tell us a little bit about the science? Our audience loves science, and so I think they'd be really interested in some more background. Yes, so the scientific background here is we are pretty much exposed to a lot of man-made chemicals every day. And this is through you know, the food you eat, the water you drink, the products that you use, and even the air you breathe. So everything is pretty much made of chemical and you're exposed to a lot of things. And this whole concept of exposome is pretty much measuring your toxic chemical exposure over your lifetime. And this exposome interacts with your genome and which then have an effect on your, on your lifestyle and on your disease outcome. So now comes Million Marker, your company. What are you guys doing about this? Yes, so we wanted to create a tool for individuals to identify, measure, and then track their exposures and really learn what's inside their body and then take actions. 
And so when you say exposure, what exactly do you mean? So exposure actually comes from many different routes, right? And we wanted to start with something small. And the two chemicals that we started measuring are BPA and phthalates. Um, these are pretty much, BPA and phthalates are plasticizers. So they're pretty much in all the plastics and then in everyday products and then all, as well as in your personal, uh, personal care products. Um, that's where you get your exposure. And these two chemicals are also hormone disrupting chemicals. Um, by hormone disrupting chemicals, what we mean is that these chemicals could actually interfere with your natural hormones. So one action for BPA is that BPA actually mimics estrogen and the phthalates blocks testosterone. So exposure to these chemicals, because they're hormone disrupting chemicals, they have exposure have been linked to exactly fertility issues in both men and women, uh, learning delays in kids, uh, breast cancer, diabetes, obesity, you name it. So tell us about your test, because I know I want to do it, and I'll probably make my husband do it too. How do we get a, a hold of it? And what are the steps involved? Yes, so we're live today, and people can actually order uh, a test online uh, through our website. So how it works right now is that you order a test online, um, and you take our exposure survey, uh, when you get the uh, collection kit, you pee in a cup, you send it to us, we get it analyzed, and we give you a detailed report back. And this detailed report tells you your levels, how you compare to others, and what you can do about it. Through your exposure survey, we actually do a very detailed um, diet recall, as well as a product audit. So we're trying to figure out how to better tailor your exposure and then tailor your interventions so you can implement these changes and reduce your exposure. And you so can it's come both, back. No, sorry to interrupt. So it's both diet and product. So you're looking at both of the things, what you're eating and what you're exposing yourself to, for example, with your cosmetics, your shampoo and all of that. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So because that's where these uh, chemicals are coming from. So for example, BPA are, if you drink a lot of canned drink sodas, or if you drink a lot of time from plastic bottle, did you touch thermal receipt? These are like where your sources of BPA. And then for phthalates, um, later on I'll cover, we actually measure both low molecular weight and high molecular weight phthalates. So low molecular weight phthalates usually are from personal care products. High molecular weight phthalates are from PVC product, vinyl products. So based on what you report back as well as your levels, then we can tell you what you need to do to actually reduce these exposures. And then you can come back if you want to come back and check your levels again. Wow. Show us what a kit looks like. What's in it? How do you actually do the test? Yes. So we, in the last six months, we have done a lot of uh, iterations with our kit. The current kit, what it looks like. So you get a box. Um, inside the box, you have a, a pee cup, uh, a biohazard bag, and a little craft box for safety. So you will also get, um, obviously, urine collection um, instructions and how you can collect. Pretty much we want people to do the first morning urine. When you wake up, that's the urine, more concentrated urine we want to we wanna capture. Um, then you ship it back to us. Uh, we use FedEx priority overnight. That means your sample will get to the lab as soon as possible. If you ship today by 5 p.m., it will get to the lab the next day to ensure the best sample quality. Um, since the iteration, um, I will also show uh, you guys our future kit will look like. It's a lot simpler design that's based on our customer feedback. Um, the sampling instruction is also a little more uh, clear. Um, so this is a, a newer box that people will get in the future. Nice. And what exactly does the test measure? Yes. So right now, our tests measure BPA and phthalates, as I mentioned before. So um, just to uh, capture a little more uh, background, a BPA is actually used to make clear and hard plastics. Um, so if you see any shatterproof containers, many times it could contain BPA. Uh, BPA also used as a protective lining uh, around in canned food as well as canned drinks. Uh, so th that's why they're finding plastic bottles and canned linings. 
Uh, they're also used as a coating for thermal receipts. So we have always been telling people, you know, don't touch receipts um, when you get in a store, uh, just have your receipt emailed it to you. And if you do have to touch receipt, make sure you, you, you know, you wash your hands afterwards. So for BPA, we measure uh, total BPA, conjugated BPA, and free BPA. So what we report back, total BPA is pretty much your, your overall BPA exposure. Conjugated BPA is how your body metabolized the BPA. So it shows that BPA actually goes through your body. Free BPA is the bad stuff. That's the, the major hormone disruptor. Um, so we report back all three. And for phthalates, um, a little bit of background, phthalates are actually compared to BPA, making plastic hard and clear phthalates actually make plastic soft and flexible. Um, they're also used in personal care products. A lot of time you will see uh, fragrance, for example, especially synthetic fragrance in personal care product labels. And usually that will have phthalates in, in them. And phthalates are actually make, for example, if you have, you know, fragrance perfume, uh, phthalates will actually make the perfume stick on your body a lot longer. Uh, one surprising thing I was able to find is that phthalates are actually used to make uh, vitamin capsules. Um, that was a huge surprise for myself. Um, and this is not something that you can just like simply read from the product labels. Um, phthalates are also used in PVC products. For example, sometimes a shower curtain might contain phthalates. Uh, so for phthalates, we measure low molecular weight phthalates, which include two metabolites, as well as high molecular weight phthalates that includes five metabolites. So I love how you mentioned receipt paper, because I remember I had a patient, I mean, a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago, and she wrote on her new patient intake form that she was allergic to paper. And, and after talking to her, this was why. I mean, she had looked at the research behind how thermal paper can increase our environmental exposure to BPA. And that start, that's actually what started getting me thinking about how important it was to look at this in patients and figure out a way to do it. So thank you for all the work you do. Can you show us a sample report? I'd love to see what a report looks like that a patient of mine would get. Yes. So uh, when we provide the report, uh, we provide actually two reports. One is a snapshot report. One is a longer detailed report because the detailed report is actually about 12, 13 pages. Um, so a snapshot report will give people a better idea, a quick overview of what their levels are. So um, in, a, in a snapshot report, we report back your total BPA level, your high, low molecular weight phthalate, your high molecular weight phthalate, your levels, um, how you compare to other, are you like below the average, are you above the average, uh, or are you high? And also a snapshot of the recommendations we make based on your product recall as well as your diet recall. So for the detailed report, we go into more details in terms of explaining what these chemicals are, where they, are they from, what are the health concerns regarding these chemicals, um, and then a lot more detailed tips. Great. And um, as far as the results reporting, you also mentioned that you'll compare results maybe to other people in the same sort of situation. How does that report look? So these, we actually did quite a bit innovation trying to capture as much information as we can for people. Um, so right now you can compare, we, we will compare your levels with the current million marker users. We'll also compare your results with the NHANES. So NHANES is the, called the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. That's actually done by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. That's the representative sample of the whole US. So besides uh, comparing your levels with million marker users, we will also compare your levels with the national average. Uh, noted that these chemicals, we actually don't have safe levels for them. So the comparison is based on the percentile. So if you're like below 25th, 0, 0 to 25th percentile, your level is considering low. If you're between 25th to 75th percentile, then you're a medium level. And then if you're above 75th percentile, then your, your level is high. Um, however, one thing to know is that these chemicals are synthetic chemicals. They have pretty much, they have no business to be in your body. So there's you should always, always try to reduce them. 
I love that. They have no business being in your body. So if they're in your body, they could potentially affect your fertility as well. So where can patients order a kit, where they can find you, where can they learn more? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. So um, if you'd like to keep informed, we actually put out um, a lot of educational materials through our blog. Uh, we do Instagram. Uh, we're live on Facebook and Twitter. So feel free to visit our website, uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Facebook group. Um, you can also email me uh, anytime, uh, Jenna at millionmarker.com, and happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Well, Jenna, thank you for being on today's show. Thank you for, for your visionary work, because I truly think that you're going to change the health and lives of millions of people. I think that's why you named your company Million Marker. Yes, we're hoping to start with a couple of biomarkers of exposure and eventually get to a million markers and really help push precision medicine forward. Um, and we believe that once people know their numbers, they're better equipped to make changes. And mm -hmm. we would like to, you know, besides these two biomarkers, eventually we would like to offer other tests, pesticides testing, air quality testing, and other chemicals. Wonderful. Well, I hope you'll come back on the show again to talk about those tests once they're available and even do a live fertility or, you know, environmental exposure Q&A with our audience. Is that something that you'd be able to come back and do with us? Yes, I'd love to do that. Awesome. And this is actually also part of our, our mission is how do we actually educate the public about these exposures so they can really take actions into their own hand and then change their health outcomes. Perfect. Well, thank you again. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for watching this show. Um, please feel free to subscribe on my YouTube channel. And we look forward to having Dr. Hua back on to answer more of your questions. I can't wait. Bye, everyone. Bye, Dr. Jenna. Thank you, Amy. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Abazadeh. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 